In this presentation, we're going to record two deposits, one related to an owner deposit, the owner putting money into the company, into the organization, the other a loan deposit, a deposit resulting from a loan that is being taken out. Time to turn the page with Sage 50 Cloud Accounting. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We're currently in the customer and sales section. We're going to be entering deposits. Now, note when we enter the deposits, usually you're thinking, okay, deposits should be over here in the customer section because hopefully most of the deposits are coming from an actual customer. But when you start the organization or when we're going to start to... Uh, uh, expanding the organization, we may have deposits from other sources, such as the owners putting up deposits into the company or a deposit that's going to be from a loan. Now, we're going to think about those because those are often going to be the types of deposits happen when you start the organization. And when you think about that, that type of deposits, it's not going to be part of the normal flow and therefore you're not going to have a form related to it generally. So in other words, uh, usually, if you think about the day-to-day -day type of transactions within the accounting system, if it's something that's going to happen often during each day of a trans, and then there's going to be a form related to it. And that's where we have our flow charts that we see down below. Those flow charts then make the journal entries that are going to be used to construct the financial statements. If it's not something that's going to happen every day, then there's not going to be a standard set flow to it because it wouldn't make sense to do so for something that only happens periodically. Then if it only happens periodically, you're going to say, okay, how can I put this into the system? So if it's something that only happens periodically and there's cash involved in it, then you can think about either putting it in with, with a deposit in this case, or a cash outflow, or possibly directly going into the cash registry, go, putting it into the cash register, an inflow and an outflow. Or uh, if it's something that doesn't uh, involve cash and it's something that doesn't happen very often, then you're probably going to think, well, now I got to go to the journal entry. So notice that's kind of reverse than what you normally think. If you, if you learn financial accounting, you probably learn debits and credits and you might go into the system and say, I want to do everything with journal entries. But that's not usually how you want to think about it. You want to think about it. Well, I want to do it with the forms if I can do that first. And, and then if I can't do that, can I do it by putting something into a deposit or a check or something like inflows or outflows or into the check register if it involves cash. And if I can't do that, if I can't do any of that, then... I want to go to the actual journal entry type process. That's usually how you would think of it. So in this case, we're not going to have a, a, a normal kind of customer kind of process with the deposits where most of the deposits hopefully will be coming from the customers. That is, we're going to go down to the banking. So within the banking section, uh, we could think about entering a receive money. But again, this form is kind of designed to receive money from customers, right? So if I select the drop down here, it says receive money from customers typically. So if you go into this and I would say, okay, I want the checking account, that's the account that I want. And I was to say, okay, then we can set up this form and we could basically make our make the owner as the person that deposits the money into it, right? And then apply it to the account of a, um, a, uh, a, a an equity type of account. So increasing cash, the other side going to equity. Uh, or we can we could do it with a journal entry or we can go into possibly the check register So let's think about the check register option So if we're gonna go into the if we go into the banking section and you go into the uh, Account register up top. Well now within the uh, register. You don't want the cash on hand We want to be picking the the checking account. So we're gonna be in the checking account Which has that 25,000 in it to start with and I'm just going to enter this information into the system kind of like you would like a, a checkbook kind of format, uh, more or less. So we're going to say this is going to be happening as of 010120. And I'm going to say type is going to be receiving money. Money's coming in. So this is going to be a receipt. I'm going to keep the reference as as is the uh, payee or paid by. I'm just going to call it the owner's. And I know that's kind of a generic name, but the GL account, we're going to be putting this into place. Now, we have set this up as a, as a corporation. If it was a C, bottom line is we need an equity account, first of all, right? We want to be in an equity account down here. This is going to be the owner that's putting money into, into the business. We're in the checking account item. So the increase is going to be going to the checking account. Where's the other side going to go to some type of equity account? Now, we happen to be in a corporation. If it was a corporation, you would typically have a normal C corporation it would be an investment of capital. Capital would be um, that you issued capital stock or common stock would typically be the investment format. And then you'd have paid in capital uh, for anything over the, the, the stock price or the par value. 
So if it, if it was an individual, like a sole proprietorship, then it would be an increase to like a capital account called investments, uh, or I'm sorry, a capital account, just a capital account. And if it was a partnership or an LLC, then you'd have probably multiple capital accounts for the partners that you want to be able to allocate to that equity account for each of the, of the partners. So since we're set up kind of as a C corporation here or our corporation, I'm going to put it into the common stock. Just realize though, that if you're a partnership, then it would be a capital account or something like that. Just note that uh, it would be an equity type of account is the point. So then the memo, it's gonna be uh, increase. I'm gonna say uh, stock or something or investment. And you wanna make sure that you're on the receipt side, not the payment side. So it's gonna be an increase to the checking account of the 65,000 here. We're not gonna have any sales tax item and then we're in the balance section. So then I'm gonna go ahead and save this. So I'm gonna save this transaction. Uh, you must enter a reference. So we're gonna enter a reference. So we're, I'm gonna call the reference uh, the investment. So let's say I'm gonna keep that as the reference and then, or a deposit, you might put deposit. And then I'm gonna say save. Uh, you're about to enter it outside the transaction period, that's okay. And then note that up top here, I'm now looking at this for the entire year. So I wanna look at this for the year, and that means you should be able to see all the transactions. So I got the 25,000 starting, 65,000 increasing, that brings me up to that uh, 90,000. So then if I was to minimize, let's minimize this and go over to our financial statement reports now. Uh, reports drop down we're going to go on down to those financial statement reports we want to take a look at the balance sheet let's open up the balance sheet so that we can do so we can take a look at it and then i'm going to make this as of january so let's open this for january and then we can see the checking account now at the ninety thousand. if we were to double click on it we then see our investment the 65 if i double click on that it takes us right back then to the register so i'm going to close this back out and I'm gonna, I'm gonna close this back out. And then we're gonna go on down to the other side of it, which we put into the common stock. So notice we put in the common stock differentiating from the retained earnings. The retained earnings being what's accumulating over time in a corporation type of ins, and the common stock being like the issuance of the common stock. Again, if it was a sole proprietor or like a partnership, you might have multiple capital accounts if it was a partnership and you'd wanna make sure that you put it into the, the, the proper capital account. But in either case, it would be down here in the equity or capital uh, section, whatever you call it, depending on the entity that you're using. So there we have that. If we go into that, then of course, we will see that transaction once again. Let's close that back out. Now let's take a look at the other major source of funding that might be there when you start an organization or expand it, and that's gonna be a, a loan. So once again, the checking account's gonna be going up, but this time we're gonna be putting it down here to some type of loan as opposed to uh, putting it to the, the equity account. So the other way we could have the financing. So I'm gonna go, all right, now we're gonna put a loan information. Let's go on back to our check register. We're gonna do basically the same process here. So I'm gonna go back to the banking section. Let's go back to the banking section. Let's open up that uh, register again because I closed it. I'm gonna open this up. This time I'm gonna show the entire year first before I start entering stuff. So I wanna look at the entire year and I also want to be in the correct account, which is going to be the uh, checking account. So let's be in the checking account here. We're going to enter this one as of 01. Oh, uh, let's make it a one, 1020. And this one's going to be a receipt as well. So I'm just going to type in R for receipt. This is going to be, I'm just going to call the reference a deposit now instead of a reference like a check number. Or this now is called a deposit. And this is going to be coming from, let's say, Chase who is a bank, that's gonna be a bank, because it's coming from the bank. And then we need a GL account. Now we could use the loan account we have outstanding. And again, we have the same kind of thing, same kind of discussion with the loans that we could go into, right? And that's gonna be that, do you wanna put them all to one loan account or multiple? I would rather put them into multiple loan accounts, possibly have the loan number, and then have adjusting entries at the end of the time period to consolidate them and break out short-term and long-term loans uh, as needed. So to do that, I'm gonna go to the another window here so I can open up a the general ledger and add another account. So I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna open up another ledger. Let's go on down to the lists. And then when we wanna go to the uh, chart of accounts so that we can add another account for another loan. Cause this is gonna be a separate loan. This isn't like the same loan. And so we have the current loan, which is the current portion note payable uh, 5795. It's in account number 
2500 so we want to make this like 250 or something like that on the account number so i'm going to say new let's make a new account with like the 2510 so 2510 new account and i'm going to say 2510 and i'll copy the the same kind of uh, name that i have the same convention of the name which is going to be the current portion note and then I'm gonna put the last four digits of this note number which I'm gonna say is at three four one seven the type of account is gonna be a, a current liability account which is way at the bottom other current liability type of account so I'm gonna say that's the one no beginning balances you almost never want to be you know touching that beginning balance thing again you probably want you know find a way to you know, get that button to disappear so then I'm gonna say, uh, save what you could pr you could probably do in the settings, but I won't get into that. We're gonna say save, and then I'll close this back out. And then let's refresh. If it doesn't refresh automatically for you, then you can obviously uh, go through the refresh thing here. And then we're gonna see our two loans. There's our two loans. So now we wanna pick this one, the one with the 3417. That's the one we want. So then I'm gonna go back over here and we want to pick up the account should appear now hopefully I don't have to refresh it on this side hopefully that's what I'm hoping for and then we want the, the three four uh, one seven so that there it is there it is so two five one zero and then the memo is gonna be a loan let's say the payment it's not gonna be a payment it's gonna be a receipt this time we're saying it was fifty thousand 50,000 no sales tax so I think that's it let's go ahead and save it and see what happens and we're out of the range that's okay that's okay so that brings us 50,000 up on the register to the 140 that should of course also be reflected on the financials on the balance sheet let's go on back to the balance sheet and see if that is indeed the case it does populate here automatically for us if it doesn't do it for you you can go to the refresh button up top and that'll refresh it and then if you go back into the checking account, we're gonna see there's our transaction. Uh, once again, we have that deposit for the 50,000 now. This deposit, however, closing this back out, not being from the owner, not being from customers, but from a loan. So when, if we go down to the liability section, then we see our loan, there's our new loan. So notice I'm listing out the loans. This is the current portion of the loans. I'm only gonna group them in one account. However, if there was a long-term portion, I wouldn't put the long-term portion in it, why? because I, I just want them in one account so I can tie them out to an amortization table, then break out the long-term portion periodically, as well as group them together in one account of current and long-term as needed for reporting purposes outside of the company. For internal reporting purposes, I'd like to be able to track them in one account and tie them to the loan balances. So no effect on uh, the income statement thus far because we've just been entering a, a loan. So. No effect on the income statement so far. This is going to be it. That's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.